friends, it's Matchbox Day. Always a fun day. Don't go away. Hey everybody, it is Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And it is indeed Matchbox Day, which is always a fun day for me and I hope for you. Today we're going to be doing the Lesney Matchbox number 43 Aveling Barford Tractor Shovel. It should be a lot of fun, a little bit different, some different challenges to meet, and we're going to kind of spruce it up a little bit. So let's get right to it. Okay, so today we have the Lesney Matchbox 43B2, the Aveling Barford Tractor. It's a pretty cool little guy. It's got the working bucket, a little dude on the top. It rolls around pretty good on these big old tires. It's uh, painted in red and yellow, and I think we're going to just do a restoration on this guy. So it's a, a yellow body with a red base, and uh, I think we're going to go ahead and stick mostly with that. Okay, so the thing sits a little bit crooked. I don't know if I'm really going to try to fix that because I really don't want to break the bucket. And it's not that big a deal, really. So I, I think unless there's something that forces me to fix it, I'm not going to try and straighten it out. I'm just going to live with it that way. After all, it is a construction vehicle. Okay, I'm going to use my shielded drilling here to take this thing apart. So I'm just going to find the best uh, bit to use. Uh... And I think I'm going to be in really good shape here because all the parts other than that, uh, you know, bend in this thing, all the parts look pretty good. All right, I've got my bit, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and drill out this uh, the one post. There's only one post on this vehicle, and the other end is held in by a tab. And so once we get that apart, uh, we'll just be able to see what we have here. And yet, it doesn't seem to want to come apart. So, what am I doing wrong? Well, a little investigation is going to reveal that it looks to me like the pin for the bucket must go through both the body and the base. And it's locking it all together. So, we're going to have to go ahead and take the wheels and the bucket off before we can get this completely apart. Whenever I can, I like to save as much as uh, of the metal as possible, so I don't like to grind away these pins. Uh, I prefer to use a pair of straight-jawed pliers and kind of squish the crimp back down so that I can get the pins out. And so that's what I'm going to do here uh, to get the pin out and be able to take the bucket off, and I'll probably do the same thing for the wheels. And sure enough, as soon as I pulled the pin from the bucket, the uh, the rest of the vehicle comes apart. And so here I've got the base with the wheel still on it. The guy is actually part of the base. And here's the body, pretty simple. It's in perfect shape. And here's the bucket with the little pin. And I think that's a, a lot of where the, the bend is at. But with those arms being what they are, there's no way I want to try and bend those back. The, the bend could be down here in the base. Either way, I'm not going to try and mess with it. I don't want to make it worse. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the wheels off. And again, I'll just use uh, flat rod pliers to kind of squeeze the crimp down so I can pull the wheels off. And get all those off and put to the side and we can deal with those later. Okay, so get my little container, put all my parts in here so I don't lose anything. Get this pin out of there. And I think we're about ready to go ahead and strip the paint off this sucker. Okay, so here I am. I'm about to use my gel paint stripper, as always. I've been getting a lot of commentary uh, from different guys about using caustic soda, which is really just lie. And uh, I, I know I'm going to try it, and you'll see it here on, on my channel. Um, 
not sure how, how I'll feel about it, but I'm going to give it a shot anyhow. We'll, we'll see. But for right now, until I'm ready to, to move to that, we'll uh, continue to just use my gel paint stripper. The biggest problem with the gel paint stripper is it can get kind of messy. And even though I'm wearing gloves, uh, the paint stripper can get through the gloves. And I, I wear a pretty good pair of gloves. I don't buy the cheapos. These are pretty solid uh, gloves. And yet still these paint strippers can go through them after a while. So, um, you know, maybe caustic soda might be a better way. But for now, this is what I've got to live with. Yeah, that's just me making sound effects of me putting this stuff on there. That's all that is. That's sound Pretty damn good one, if I just say so myself. Okay, with the stripper having gone about as far as it can go, it's about time to take it to the sink. I'll wash off the excess stripper, and I'll hit it with the brass bristle brush and try and remove any of the excess paint, and then we'll see what we have. Okay, so I'm back from the sink, and you can see the stripper did a pretty good job, except on the base. For some reason, that paint is not coming off, so I'm going to have to put in a little extra work. All right, so anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and dry everything up, and I'm going to hit it with wire brushes and my dental picks, and I'm going to get all the rest of this paint off of here uh, so that we can get it over to the paint booth. Okay, so I've decided instead of just the two colors, I'm going to actually paint this in black, red, and yellow. And I'm going to customize it, so I'm going to paint the little dude too. So I'm going to go ahead and start by painting the body and... It's not really just a yellow. It's not like a primary yellow. Uh, it's got a, a subtle bit of orange to it, so I added a few drops of orange paint to my yellow. And I'm just using a Tamiya uh, X8 uh, yellow paint uh, with a couple of drops of X6 orange in it. And I've got it mixed up and thinned, and we're just going to lay it down and get a nice even coat. As always, I'll start with a thin tack coat, and then a couple medium coats, and then I'll try and lay down a really nice, clean, glossy coat. And I think this is looking pretty awesome, so I think we're going to be able to move on to the other parts. Now, I don't think I mentioned this, but I did begin by priming all the parts using Tamiya Fine Primer. And uh, here I've got the bucket, and this is just going to get straight old X7 Tamiya Red. Uh, I think it's the perfect red for it. And normally the base would be getting this color too, but I've decided that I'm going to put that in black. So, the bucket, let's turn it red using my uh, normal painting setup where I use the tack coat, medium coats, and then the thick coats. The trick with something like this bucket is to keep it moving and to make sure that you come at it from every possible direction. Otherwise you're going to have spots that aren't going to get the proper coat of paint. Okay, so after I'm done over at the paint booth, I can turn my attention to the wheels and axles. And uh, the wheels are pretty grubby, but they're they're nice. So we're going to go ahead and use Super Clean and a toothbrush, and we're going to give these things a good scrubbing. Okay, so as I was cleaning the wheels off, I noticed that there was some stuff, some gummy stuff, stuck in the treads of the tires. So I'm going to use my little pick here, and I'm going to pick that stuff away. Not really sure what it is, but it's got to go. So we're going to get that away and re-clean as necessary. As I mentioned earlier, I am going to paint the little dude. So uh, he's not just going to be a little red humanoid figure. 
So right now he is black because he's part of the base, and I painted the entire base with the Tamiya X1 gloss black. So now I'm going to go ahead and start laying in the colors with brush paints. And for that, I'm going to be using Vallejo model colors. And we're going to start with a little flat flesh. And uh, like always, I'll go ahead and thin uh, the paint down a little bit with some water, just by dipping my brush into some water first. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint around the, uh, the face and hands. So it's in gray. Flat aluminum. So I needed the skin on the guy to dry pretty good before I can go on. So I can go ahead and take a little Tamiya uh, silver and paint in some of the details on the tractor body itself. Like uh, some of the latches and connections and things like that. So I'll bust out some Tamiya silver. Uh, frankly, that's because the Vallejo doesn't have a decent silver, so we'll go over to Vallejo for this. I mean, to uh, to me uh, to get the silver, and we'll start painting in the details. Now I know you can hear the sound of freedom in the background. I live very close to Nellis Air Force Base, and every now and then they make a ruckus. So just ignore them and remember that they're out there keeping us safe. Okay, now, if you're one of the guys who's watching this video and saying to yourself, there's no way I can paint little details like this, I'm, I'm too trembly or uncoordinated or whatever, well, I can promise you, you're not more trembly or uncoordinated or ham-fingered than I am. And so if I can do this, anybody can do it. Use things around you to help get stability. Here you can see I'm using the desk. I've got the, the body on the desk, and I've got my hand on the desk, and use a good light advisor. And yes, you can do this. Alright, I'll let that silver dry and I can turn my attention back to the dude. And I decided that a working man would probably wear like some kind of navy clothes. But I didn't want his, his coat and his pants to be the same shade. So I'm using two different shades of a dark blue to uh, paint his pants and his jacket and his ball cap. You know, it's super easy to edit the videos and make everything look like it went perfectly well when in fact it didn't. And uh, what's going to happen here is I'm using two different blues and at one point I get confused and I'm using literally two different blues on one body of clothing and before I figure it out and have to go back and fix it. Um, I guess I must have been stoned during that moment. Point is, mistakes happen to everybody. Don't let these videos fool you. Except for some additional details, everything is painted, so I think we can go ahead and put this tractor back together, and then we can go ahead and put the final details on after that. So I've got all the parts laid out here, and I'm just trying to put together a plan of attack, and I'm going to have to put the wheels and the body and the bucket all on so that I can go down to the press to spin the axles at the same time. So, I guess that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start putting all that together. Okay, so here I'm going to go ahead and screw that together using a small button-headed screw. It's a 256, and it comes in black, so it'll blend in nicely to the base. And we'll go ahead and screw that together, and uh, once we're done with that, we'll put the bucket in place, and then we can go downstairs to the drill press, and spin the wheels onto the axles. Took a little bit off of his head. I can touch that up, no problem. Okay, let's go ahead and put this back on. That'll go right through everything. That's gonna go this way. All right, so base is on, wheels are on, little dude is painted. We're going to just slide this pin through and get it through the bucket. 
And there you have it. It's kind of put together. We just need to uh, take care of spinning over the ends of the pins. Okay, so we're back from the drill press. So this vehicle is pretty much solid and reassembled. Uh, it's not going to come apart on us. And now it's time for a little bit of detail stuff. I thought this vehicle could really use a uh, benefit from a wash. So I'm using, to me, a pin wash. And uh, this stuff was going to be great for some of these grills and vents. Watch how this works. You just kind of touch it and let it flow in. And instant detail. It's fantastic. Now, the paint that I painted the tractor in is acrylic. The Tamiya wash is an enamel. So if I do make a mistake, I can use a, uh, a little Q-tip and some enamel thinner, and I can wipe it down without damaging the paint underneath of it. So that's a really nice trick to remember. If you've got acrylic, wash it with enamel. If you've got enamel, wash it with acrylic. And that way you can get the stuff off without killing it. Now here I'm going to use a little bit of the Tamiya Brown wash. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a little bit of it on the skin tones of the driver to give him a little life. He's so small and there are so few details that really there isn't a lot else you can do here. So after giving him the base flesh color paint job, you can put a little of the brown wash on there, take a Q-tip, dab away just a little bit of the extra, and leave the rest there to add some highlight depth and realism and it works great okay with these final touches done I think we can go ahead and call this uh, complete and so let's go ahead and take it and get the final look at it and there you have it the tractor in all its glory. We won't call it a restoration. We'll call it a, a custom because, you know, I did some extra stuff with the detail painting and whatnot. But, boy, I sure think it looks amazing. And it's going to look fantastic in my collection. Okay, there you have it. The Aveling Barford Tractor Shovel, number 43B. It uh, has my own little personal touches to it, and I think it came out amazing. Just a little tip about this, this matchbox. It did come in a yellow body with a yellow shovel, red base, red guy. Mine did come original, yellow body, red shovel, red base, red guy. Now mine is yellow body, red base, black, uh, red shovel, black base, and a painted guy, which I think looks Super awesome, and I'm super happy. It's going to look great in my collection. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe. Click the little bell, and you'll be notified anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or just want to make a comment or say hello, please do so down below. I really do read everybody's comments. This is Paul from Fat Guy Productions. I'm going to get out of here. Until next time, I hope you have an amazing, fantastic, matchboxy, tractor shovel kind of day. Be good.